We're back to work on the 79 Ford. Now we're gonna kick things off with rebuilding the two barrel carburetor. We've got a kit sitting here for it that we're gonna throw in it. Clean things up, do a nice job. Mainly the big issue with it right now is it needs an accelerator pump. She's leaking gas pretty good down into the intake there. And you know, when you really stab the throttle on this thing, it, you know, wants to quit and die, which is typical symptoms of that. And of course, you know, leaking tells you right away. So we'll go ahead and start tearing into this thing, get that carburetor off, and then we'll tear it down and see what it looks like and see what we can do with it. There, I got the air cleaner off and out of the way. Now, on the first video of this truck, like I talked about, this is, you know, late 1970s going into the 1980s. That's the era of when emissions started to become prominent and needed on vehicles. So, you know, they started throwing, you know, a lot extra vacuum components on them, smog pumps, recirculation stuff, EGRs, all that type of thing. And it just, you know, made a huge mess, caused a lot of issues when, you know, hoses would go bad and and stuff like that. So this this 351 still has most all of that original emissions uh, equipment intact. It's got the smog and everything on it and then all the vacuum lines and, and whatnot. So this is a Motorcraft 2150 style carburetor. It is the emissions version of the 2100. Of course, the 2100 is a better carburetor. A lot of people put those on these motors to get rid of these 2150s um, they're actually detuned for emissions so different size jets and whatnot so um, we're going to go ahead and keep this one and just throw a kit in it um, they work good enough for you know this um, it's not really going to be a performance truck or anything so we're fine with original equipment and it, it sure runs good with this style carb any, anyway and i'm sure it'll run way better once we take care of it but um yeah you know stuff like uh, this you can see the vacuum lines are old and, you know, getting weak and then they've, you know, been damaged, which causes a vacuum leak. So uh, the more vacuum leaks you have on stuff like this, the more issues you're going to have. It's going to cause, you know, runnability issues because when you've got a vacuum leak, that causes a lean condition. So it messes with your carburetor tuning and it leans things out and actually... Uh, a lean condition will make things run hotter so you know you want to richen that back up so it's you know runs right and doesn't overheat so you know taking care of vacuum leaks plugging off stuff that's what we're going to do we're going to get rid of a lot of things on here and clean things up spruce it up so we're going to move in that direction while working on the carburetor at the same time and another issue that pertains to vacuum leaks is that is unfiltered air going into your intake system. So rather than everything just going into your air cleaner, being filtered through the air filter and then down from there, you know, you've got uh, air introduction and all these other places that's not being filtered. So, you know, if you're going through a dusty climate or whatever, that's just being sucked into your motor and you don't want that either. So it's going to be really beneficial to clean things up and, you know, make it all work properly because, you know, that's stuff you don't want to have. And yeah, you can see how good she's been leaking gas down into the intake there. And the accelerator pump also serves as the gasket. So when your accelerator pump gets weak, it's obviously going to show you uh, why, because it'll start leaking too. So that's a good, good way to tell. Of course, the truck's going to run differently without that functioning properly as well. Um, if you guys recall my carburetor tips and tricks, so to speak, video, uh, you'll notice some stuff I went over. And it's good to see this round gasket up here still for the air cleaner. That's something very vital and important that you want on here because, you know, that's another way for unfiltered air to get into your carburetor and intake is it'll go under the air cleaner and come up and get through that way. So. Make sure you replace these when you rebuild a carburetor. The kits will not give you one, usually, unless you get a good quality kit. So that's something to pay attention to. Anyways, just wanted to go over that stuff real quick. We'll go ahead and start unhooking everything and working at getting the carburetor off, and then we'll start tearing into it. There, got the carburetor off. Of course, it's nice and dirty under there to be expected. We've got our nice thick carburetor spacer gasket still. So 
we will probably get a new one of those. Uh, probably end up leaving the uh, EGR spacer plate. Um, they do make, you know, block off ones or whatever, but we'll see what we get into as far as that goes. Now, this isn't the original carburetor. You know, it, it looks clean and I notice it's got a reman tag on it. It is still a original style Motorcraft brand, but um, obviously somebody's put a reman carb on here at some point, so they've messed with stuff. Um, the wiring for having an electric choke is here. However, this is a thermostatic style choke, so you've got a heat riser tube that, uh, you know, heat comes up from the, the intake and then it operates that spring that's wound up in the, the choke housing there. And that's how, uh, you know, your choke works along with vacuum assist. It all works together. A lot of people don't like them because, well, you know, they don't really know how to mess with them and set them up right. They're not too bad. I kind of prefer the heat riser style um, over the electric. You know, it's a little more reliable, it seems like. So, yeah, when you're monkeying around with carburetors, make sure you take this heat riser tube off and you don't just rip it because these things like to get bent up and broken in the intake. And then that gives you another leak to deal with. So... Yeah, just something to pay attention to. So we'll go ahead and check out the carburetor now. Here's that, along with the rebuild kit. Um, there's where that heat riser tube fitting goes on. And of course, this obviously doesn't have the plug-in for an electric style. And then you've got your vacuum assist right here. So, you know, it's not too bad, pretty straightforward. Personally, I prefer, you know, just a plain old manual choke cable, but, you know, these automatic ones don't work too bad when they're set up right. There's the reman tag, but it's still a motorcraft, so it's not a China knockoff or anything at least. So we've got a good carburetor to start with. Looks relatively clean still, but we're going to go through the whole thing anyway and make it all right. Give it all new components so it'll last for a good long time and be reliable. So let's go ahead and start tearing into it. Okay, we'll get started. Take this top piece off. Undo the linkage for the choke. Put a little mark on our cap so we know where to set it again when we go back together. And there's the thermostatic spring that operates the choke. Then this has a gasket. Something else to pay attention to. Take this screw off. And then these surrounding screws to get the whole housing off. Then there's gonna be more linkages to unhook to get this the rest of the way off. And then we'll feed this one down through when we pull the top piece off. And then. That'll just slide. It's got a little bushing in there for wear.
little super tiny C-clip. Make sure you don't fly that across the shop and lose it because they can be a pain to find. Now we're good to take our top cover off the carburetor base or bowl or whatever you want to call it. Nice and clean so far, not too bad. And then I try to save the gasket the best that I can, just for helping to match up with a new one, like so. There's our bowl and our float. Seems to be functioning. Needle and seat are doing what they're supposed to. Some dirt down in the bowl there, but relatively clean. A lot better than most that I get into. She's uh, pretty gummed up on the bottom though, I'd say. Now just unsnap this keeper that holds the float in, and that allows you to get that out. And there's the float. We'll test it to make sure it works and everything, but I prefer brass floats over these. Um, we can see about putting a brass one in it. That's what I usually do on these two barrels, but uh, we'll test this one and see how it is. Here's the needle. The tip of that looks in good shape, but we get a new one in the kit anyway. So once that's out of the way, there's your seat down in here. Then we can unscrew that. We'll go ahead and get the uh, the bowl emptied out. It's still got gas in it. And we'll pull this inlet filter off. And we'll get a new one of these as well when we go back together. So let me get this gas emptied out and we'll keep on going. All right, get this off now. Oh yeah, she's nice and dirty. There's definitely some junk coming out of there. So be good to replace that. Now we can go ahead and get our seat taken out of here. Sometimes they have a gasket on them, so that's something else to watch out for. This one's got this little, uh, guard thing around it or whatever you want to call it so that's what that uses we'll put that off to the side and there it is with the seat out that's our inlet obviously and then the needle operates that allows fuel flow through the inlet and then into here to fill up the bowl and then when it's full the float rises up shoves the needle down into the seat and that's how it meters and operates the fuel supply. So we'll keep going here. We'll pull these jets out and just start basically gutting the rest of this thing. These things are pretty simple. We'll pull the uh, Venturis out, take that whole assembly out. And then uh, we'll wor work at getting the accelerator pump taken apart. And then the linkage we can usually just keep on and then clean up everything after it's all taken apart. So we'll go to our jets. These ones are nice and stuck in there. A little bit of a 
impact to them usually helps. There we go, there's one. And, you know, if you can see through them, then they're not plugged up, but usually they will have junk in them. Something else that's important is make sure you use the right size flathead screwdriver to fit them. Otherwise, you just chew them up and then kind of wreck them. And then that makes it a pain for whenever you want to tear it apart. Because then, you know, it just wants to strip on you. There's that one broke free. There's that one. And we'll get the rest out here. gasket to pay attention to. Put that together. Relatively clean and good shape. And we'll have this little rod and there will be a check ball in there and you want to make sure you don't lose that. Make sure you dump it upside down into your hand and there's that check ball there it is pretty well gutted now so we can go ahead and continue on with the accelerator pump get that taken off which is our main issue to why we're getting into this thing Got that spring in there. Oh yeah, nice and dried up and brittle. Usually they'll blow out on the side here and start causing major issues, but you know, it's just a little pump deal. And it serves as the gasket at the same time. So with that out of the way, you get this little rubber piece in here and it comes through on the other side and it just holds itself in. So you just push it through. Usually they'll just rip, but yep, that one ripped. Then make sure you grab the other little piece from the back side so it doesn't stay in there and gum something up. So that uh, takes care of that. We'll get our linkage here taken off and out of the way so that's not messing with us. Now the rest of this can stay. Throttle linkage is fine. You don't have to worry about that. Um, you know, that'll all stay intact. And we, it's a general practice to uh, not really take the, uh, the throttle out. You know, it doesn't really need attention unless it's got, you know, shaft play or it's real wobbly where it can introduce a vacuum leak on the side here. But, you know, this thing's not too old. And, uh, the play that I feel in it just feels like normal tolerance stuff. So we'll go ahead here and uh, take the mixture screws out and then the power valve, and then we'll pretty well be all torn down. Here's another vacuum issue here. It's got a cap, but it's no good. So we'll replace that when we go back together. Take our mixture screws out. Gasket on that. And then for our power valve, we'll find the right size wrench here.
also a gasket for that. Could use a little bit of a cleaning, I'd say. Also, gasket here for choke linkage stuff. We'll get that off of there and be sure to replace that. Sometimes they like to stick on there. And also, we'll get this linkage taken off so that we don't damage this plastic piece in the solvent. Once again, another nice little tiny C-clip to go missing like that. Put it over here with the rest of the stuff. And then there, that allows us to get that off and out of the way. And we are good to go ahead and start cleaning this up, which it's not gonna need a whole lot, but it'll still get some. Get it all good and clean and blown out with compressed air, especially down in here in the inlet and stuff like that, down where the jets go. And then uh, we'll get the top cleaned up, all the little loose parts thrown into a basket and then clean those up in solvent and then we're good to go back together with the kit and everything okay we got everything all cleaned up here nice and ready to go a lot better than what it was when we tore it apart so we'll break open the kit get everything all laid out and start going back together with it probably just end up doing a time lapse so you guys can see the whole process but still uh you know speed things up it's it's slow and tedious and sometimes you gotta backtrack a little bit sometimes you miss the little parts and pieces but uh these two barrels are pretty well easy and uh, relatively simple so that helps with it but yeah we'll get set up here and get this thing back together
we're cruising right along going back together got the choke all assembled again linkages are good and happy and function as they should everything else tested the float in some water before we put that in so that's back in with a new needle and seat and that functions as it should accelerator pump is pumping now so that's good and yeah pretty well everything else is all set and ready we're just waiting for the top to go on our rebuild kit has been good to us so far and right at the very end we found our first issue with it um the top gasket does not match up to the original one so here's the new gasket here's the original and you can see the difference between the two in the back here where it goes back here so our new one you know doesn't quite match up with these screw holes in the carburetor so that is going to force us to reuse the original one now it's not damaged or anything that's why you're careful when you take them off in case you do have to do this and stuff doesn't match up so it's still pliable so i think we're all set to reuse it it's not going to hurt anything and it shouldn't leak so we'll just uh, reuse this one throw it back together put the top back on put our screws in and then uh, hook up one more linkage on top for the butterfly and we're pretty well done with this thing so yeah not too bad <laughs> Well, there it is all wrapped up definitely looks a lot better than when we started so should be all set ready to go we'll go ahead and uh, pick up a new filter for it so we can get that replaced and it'll be nice and clean don't want to gum up our new job here and uh, the gasket worked out good so no worries there should be all sealed up perfect so once we get gas going into it we'll be sure to check that and make sure there's no leaks or anything but yeah, went together good, nice and clean. Wasn't too bad to, uh, you know, scrub the junk out of it either. So that's always a bonus. So uh, the kit actually gave us a new thick uh, gasket. So that's good. We'll get that replaced and thrown on there. And uh, once we do that, we'll start tidying up the vacuum lines and cleaning things up on the motor itself. Prepping things under the hood here. Blew all the uh, dirt and debris off the intake for one thing, so that cleaned it up, made it look uh, a lot better. And then I pulled the spacer plate off and replaced the gasket underneath it between the spacer and the intake manifold, and then put that back on. Tore a bunch of the vacuum lines and stuff out of here that's not needed anymore. And then uh, blocked off and plugged this uh, EGR valve, so... That shouldn't be doing anything now. No leaks or anything, hopefully. And put our new uh, spacer gasket on here on top. So we're ready to throw the carburetor on it, get everything hooked back up, and see how she does. Okay, we're all hooked back up. All the vacuum leaks are plugged off, so that's good, other than these coolant ones, which uh, we'll take these out and get some pipe plugs and replace those with. Same with this one in the heater line. Not really a fan of that. Probably just get rid of this whole junction thing and run new hose and delete that as well. 
but for now we can uh, see how she starts up and runs. It's definitely going to be a big improvement compared to how it was. So we'll go ahead and get this thing primed up with some gas again and then uh, tune on it a little bit and we'll see. I think I got it tuned pretty good here now. It didn't really like the initial base settings on the mixture screws. Usually I just go one and a half turns out, one and a quarter. Sometimes they like two full turns. So I tried both of those settings and uh, it wasn't liking it. I had to set the idle high to keep it running until I could come out here and adjust on the screws. But uh, yeah, it didn't like the base setting for whatever reason. Sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. So uh, I basically uh, did them by ear, you know, just listen to it, listen to how it's running, how it smooths out when you uh, adjust each screw. And that's a good way to do it um, if they're not wanting to go by, you know, actual technical spec stuff. You just listen to the RPMs and, and do it by ear. So I did that and it sounded pretty good. So once it uh, smoothed out, I brought the idle down to a normal, you know, idle range RPM and then... Uh, you also saw me taking a can of carburetor cleaner and spraying around. Now that was me checking for any vacuum leaks, you know, at the base or around the carburetor where any air could be getting introduced and then causing a vacuum leak, giving us a lean condition. And when you spray it, if you have a vacuum leak, you'll hear the RPM go up and then it'll come back down and then you keep spraying it and it goes up. So I didn't really notice anything. It sounds like uh, it's good and tight. So... I don't think we have any vacuum leaks, so uh, we'll start it up here, see how it fires back up, and give it a listen. Well, now that we've got it nicely tuned and running good again, I've been going through and cleaning things up, getting rid of the vacuum leaks and stuff like that. So I ran to town and bought some pipe plugs and took those old fittings out, these guys here. So that really cleans things up nicely. And then we've got no more leaks that way now. So looks a lot better and uh, ought to help in the long run. So we've got that taken care of and then, uh, you know, double checked everything made sure i went through the whole carburetor and whatnot put all the vacuum caps on it that we don't need anymore such as up here and on the back side and stuff like that so we're all good that way basically all that's left now is get rid of this little vacuum deal in the heater hose connection there which um what i'm going to do for that is just run new hose up to here and we'll delete this whole thing all together and get rid of that and then uh, down there, there's like an emissions canister, whatever thing on the frame that we're going to rip out of there, get rid of that. And then we'll also take the smog pump off because it's no longer hooked up to a belt or anything. And the hoses going to it are cut. So we'll get rid of that, shed some weight, clean this thing up nicely in the front. And uh, we'll be on our way and we'll move on to something else. So yeah, she's coming along. Definitely happy with the carburetor now. So we are gaining on it. We're making good progress here. Got that heater line system taken out so we can delete that, replace the hoses. Also got the smog pump out and the bracket taken off. And the pump is 
locked up solid so good to get rid of that cleans it up down there and makes a lot more room so it looks nice so now that we've got the heater hoses out one of them was actually you know super close to just disintegrating so it's good that we're replacing them we'll get some new ones route it up there and clean everything up and uh, throw it back together there much better Clean things up quite a bit, zip tied some things. Still gonna keep cleaning things up. Hook this vacuum back up for that. And uh, yeah, we're moving right along pretty good. Definitely is looking a lot better for sure. Okay, she's all back together, topped off with coolant. I think we're good to go test drive this thing now and see how much of a difference all that made. I'm sure it's gonna be pretty substantial. But check this out. There's how much we cut out of the truck for all the unnecessary garbage. So that's quite a bit there. Definitely nice to make these motors, you know, way more tidy and neat looking without all that junk on them. So we'll get this thing pulled outside, take some hot water and clean up the coolant mess, and then we'll go drive it. Okay, we're out on the highway. Let's see how she does. Well, there's one big thing taken care of. Runnability is always a huge factor in getting something old back on the road again. So nice to have that taken care of. The carburetor is nice and happy. We got it tuned nicely. We took care of a bunch of the vacuum and emissions leaks and got rid of all that stuff, cleaned up the engine bay quite a bit and just made it look a lot nicer. So we're gonna keep doing that kind of stuff. And this is not the last video you guys will be seeing on this truck. So be sure to stay tuned. We're gonna dive into uh, you know other little features on it and slowly improve it along the way and you guys will get to watch along so yeah let me know down in the comments what you think be sure to leave a like and subscribe don't forget merch store is down below and until the next video i will see you guys later